five foods that could be gone soon. Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. And this is the first time I've done a video inside my pantry, <laughs> our working pantry. So we've all heard about shortages. We've all seen increased prices. So foods that could be gone soon or priced out of your reach. I want to talk about what I think is important, what I feel is a good idea to prep now. And even if I'm wrong, so what? You got these preps that will definitely set you up for success. But before I go into the video, could you please hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, share the videos, comment below, and check us out on Patreon, doing lots of good things there. Um, Patreon, yeah, come join us on Team AP, be one of the cool kids. <laughs> Anyway, okay, meat is number one. The push for meatless society, Bill Gates and all the other powers that be, buying up farmland, buying up ranches, um, all that kind of stuff. Not to mention bird flu, mad cow disease, swine disease, this disease, that disease, this malady, malady, whatever, blah. Euthanizing animals all around the world, millions and millions of them and cracking down on people's ability to raise their own. That's a big one also. So we will see more shortages and probably a lot more increased prices also in the market for meat and meat related stuff. So meats, mainly Americans eat beef, chicken, turkey, pork, fish. Those are kind of the five that you know, people have narrowed it down to. There's a lot of other stuff you can eat, though. Um, I love venison. Deer and elk. Oh, yeah. Really good. Um, moose is okay. Bear. Greasy. But, you know, there's also duck. There's a lot of other animals out there also. But, yeah, all the chicken cullings, all the other stuff, cyber attacks, um, increased prices of feed, increased fuel prices for delivery, all this adds up into a big snowball for increased prices and probably leading to a lot more shortages, if not losing the ability to get it completely. Hopefully not, but um, so what's the answer? Well, easy answer is raise your own. Uh, well, maybe not easy, but that is an answer. Also, stockpiling lots of foods. Um, let me see, where is, oh, it's up. It's back over here. Meats, canned meats. Let me show you an example. Canned meat, roast beef. That's a good canned meat to have. Also, uh-oh, I don't want to knock everything over. <laughs> um, here we go. Canned chicken. Yep, canned chicken's really good. Or you can get these things also. Chicken, yep. I gotta show you this really quick though. My favorite food on earth, pesto. I love pesto. Anyway, okay, let me put this back up here. Cream of chicken soup, good. Okay, yes, canned meats, freeze dried meats, pickled meats. Um, yeah, I guess those are the options. <laughs> um, okay. Raising your own obviously is the best way to go about doing it because then it's long term, it's sustainable. You can, you know, let them reproduce, all that stuff. But also, it may be a good idea to look into protein um, alternatives or other sources of protein. I don't want to give up my meat. You may not either. But if we can identify other sources of protein that might be also, well, will be good for our diet, to meet our dietary constraints, uh, making sure that we have well-balanced food, macronutrients, and micronutrients. So peen, peas, beans, lentils, sunchokes. You guys see me, I talk about that in my garden. The Jerusalem artichokes, aka sunchokes. They're a tuber, 28% protein, really good source of protein. Pea protein is really good also. I didn't mention soy. No, I didn't mention soy because it's highly GMO'd and um, I don't think any of it's organic. And I don't really like soy products. Um, soy has a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, I don't really like soy. But anyway, if you like soy, you know, maybe think about that. Uh, freeze dried, since I mentioned freeze dried, if you want to, I can save you a little bit of money and 
uh, through my affiliate uh, Ready Hour Foods with My Patriot Supply. It, my website is preparewithap.com and uh, they have freeze dried meats and meals and other things like that. So check that out if you want to as part of your food storage plan. Um, eggs, because of the chicken cullings and all the stuff like that. So eggs, think about alternatives, egg alternatives. Also powdered eggs, pickled eggs, um, dehydrated eggs, freeze dried eggs, all these kind of things, as well as raising your own chickens. But another aspect of that is tribe. You don't necessarily have to raise your own animals or grow your own, have, have your own chickens. But if you have tribe members that do, maybe you have the ability to do something else. You can hook them up with something else, services, fruits, vegetables, whatever, and then they can hook you up with eggs or meat and stuff like that. It's part of working as a team. So eggs. Next one is um, kind of multiple items. Milk, butter, cream, and cheese. Because those are all dairy products coming from cows, obviously. The increased price of hay, the increased price of a lot of things, fuel, all this stuff, like I said, combines into a perfect storm. So milk, you can get powdered milk, obviously. That's a good way to go about doing it. Um, butter, there's canned butter, there's butter powder. There's other sources probably out there too. I'm just not thinking of right this second off the top of my head. Cream, well, it's part of milk. Um, I don't know if you, I don't know, I don't think you can get dehydrated cream, but tribe, maybe one of your tribe members has a cow. One of my tribe members has four cows, two of them are pregnant. So pretty soon you'll have six cows. Um, two of them are going to, they're going to process up here like four months from now, probably, I think. So that'll be really good. I'm going to uh, try to get in on that. Um, cheese, canned cheese, powdered cheese, freeze dried cheese. Those kind of things. Cheese is a big staple of the American diet. I mean, we probably eat a lot more cheese than we need to. But anyway, cheese. Okay, what's another good one that's not animal product related? We got wheat and flour. We've heard about, hopefully you've heard about um, China, India, a bunch of other countries around the world, Ukraine, Russia, that produce a lot of wheat that aren't exporting they're keeping it for themselves. Or due to other circumstances, aka the last two countries I mentioned, um, they're not exporting stuff right now. So that's a big, that's gonna have effect. Also crop failures, increased fuel prices, lack of fertilizers, shortages on fertilizers, all this stuff, it all comes together. It's all part of the bigger picture. So I'm trying to paint here. Um, Supplies will should be getting probably will be getting a lot more limited and increasing in prices. Um, yeah, countries are not exporting them. Crop failures. One of my favorites is hard red wheat. What's good about having whole wheat berries like hard red wheat is that you can grind it up, make flour. Yes, if you have a way to grind it. Do you have a way to grind? Do you have a way to grind off grid? That's a good thing to think about. Manual wheat grinders or grain grinders. Um, but you can also sprout them. When you do sprout wheat, exponentially increases their nutritional value, which is very good. You can also um, soak them, cook them, make like a porridge type stuff, um, kind of like oatmeal, grits, that kind of stuff. So different ways to go about it. Um, wheat is easy. You can store it in Mylar bags, auction absorbers, sealed in buckets. Um, you can dry can it, things like that. Um, also think about other sources of flour. What if other sources of flour have people used throughout time? I wrote down a couple. We got potato, oat, corn, lentil, pea, and buckwheat. Those have all used, been used for flours. What you do is dehydrate, whatever it is, and you grind it up. And it makes powder, which is flour, basically. So you can supplement your flour or replace your flour with these items. Um, yeah, have method of grinding. Very important. If you're going to have wheat, have a method of grinding. If you're going to have corn, have a method of grinding so you can make cornmeal. Anyway, all right. Speaking of corn, that's next on the list. Crop failures, um, increased prices, decreased exports to us, meaning imports, less imports coming in, fertilizer prices, etc., etc., etc. 
farmers being paid to plow under crops, all, you know, I mean, that, and that's been going on for a while now. It's just part of the equation. When people are not getting the inputs, we're not getting the uh, inputs that we need from other countries, and we're still paying farmers to plow under fields and stuff, eh, that doesn't make sense. But anyway, um, yeah, fuel prices, okay, freeze-dried, dehydrated, um, canned, home canned, those kind of things. There's a lot of different ways you can get corn. Um, you can buy 40 pound bags of feed corn at Walmart for like 12 bucks, I think now, 12, 13 bucks. It used to be like 11 or 10. It's gone up a little bit, uh, but not too much. 40 pounds of corn. And yeah, that's field corn. Okay. It's not sweet corn, but so what? You can still eat it. But if corn is a large part of your diet, make sure you know how to nixtamalize it. The nixtamalization process is very important. Some of the things we get, let me see if I have any example here. Um, I don't have an example right here in front of me, but a lot of the cornmeal we get um, has already been nixtamalized. You check it in, especially in like the, like in Walmart or other stores, the Hispanic food section, um, because that culture eats a lot of corn, then the, a lot of the products that contain corn, mean cornmeal, stuff like that, masa flour, um, has already been nixtamalized. So get that. If you can, um, look at the look at the things. A lot of times it says like nixtamalatado or something. It's in Spanish, obviously, but it's nixtamalized. Um, you can also look in the ingredients list. It'll say corn, and it'll say like different kinds of different acids. Those acids are what they use to nixtamalize the corn. There's also a process that you can do it yourself. Um, check out a video, um, Arkansas Preparedness Network, yeah, APN, did a video a couple years ago on nixtamalization. It's a good video, but check it out if your if corn is going to be a large portion of your diet. Anyway, I hope you guys like the video. I hope that you are thinking about these things. I hope that you are preparing for these things and the, for these eventualities because odds are things probably are not going to get any better before they get a lot worse. And then if we get into Great Depression 2.0, like I talked about yesterday, um, skills are going to be important, like I talked about, but also having supplies. Having yourself set up properly is going to be very important. Give yourself a chance of survival. Anyway, I hope you guys like the background. Me here in my working pantry. <laughs> Door shut. Kids out there screaming around, running around, yelling. Anyway, remember that prepping is living insurance very important and it gives you peace of mind. I love you guys. Have a wonderful day and blessings to you and yours.